Hi everyone, it's Roma Fisher. Thank you for tuning in again into our program. We have prayer counselors waiting for you to uh, call in. And if you need to uh, pray with somebody, you need somebody to agree with you, uh, they're willing to pray. They're waiting for you. And they're people full of the Spirit and full of faith. And they will help you get on and get to, get your prayer answered. And I believe that uh, they'll be a blessing to you. And uh, they're waiting for you right now. So we're going to pray with you again after the program and uh, and have, um, you know, another connection with you. So watch the program. Hope, you go, hope you'll enjoy it. And I believe you will. So we'll, we'll come back right after this. Jesus defeated the enemy. And he's given us the victory. No need, no need in asking God to give you the victory because he's already given it. Lots of times I just see that there's no way I can do this. But God's the one, he's going to get it for you. The scripture saying that God is, is for us, he's with us. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. So don't be afraid. Your Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt is with you. You know, God, Emmanuel, God with us, God with you. The presence of God is here right now. Uh, God is everywhere, right? He's everywhere, and he's right here in us. He's with us. He's upon us. Potentially, you know, uh, the anointing can, can, can operate and uh, the power of God can operate anywhere, anytime. You know, so he's here now. God's here right now. His angels are here. He's in you. And I was reading uh, Philippians uh, 2. He said, it is God who, it is God who wills, who is in you willing, who is enabling you to do his will. Even when you don't want to do his will, he's going to be there to help you to do the will. There's a lot of times we don't have the strength or we don't want to follow God. We have to ask God, Lord, help us follow you. For it is God in you who wills and to do his good pleasure. He, he's there to help you, you know, get through whatever situation you're in. You might not feel like fighting. Verse 4 for the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you. He will give you victory. Those are good scriptures. Praise God. Go home right now and say, thank God. On a new scripture, amen. <laughs> Hop all the way home. Let's go to Second Chronicles 20 and verse 19. So two scriptures I'm giving you there. What I'm trying to give to you is this, that God is for you. He's with you. He's for you. So none of us here, we don't have to fight our battles by, by ourselves. In fact, if you don't want to do something, he's going to be giving you the will to do whatever it is. So, Second Chronicles 20, verse, verse uh, 17, they're being encroached by three armies. And the man of God says, but you will not even need to fight. So Pastor Ken, you won't have to fight tonight. <laughs> He's writing everybody up right, right away. Take your positions and stand still and watch the Lord. 
the Lord's victory. Whose victory it is? The Bible says, Colossians 2.15, that he, he got you the victory. Everything he did, he defeated the enemy for you. And uh, his victory is awarded to you. It's just, you know, uh, we're told that Jesus defeated the enemy and he's given us the victory. Amen. You don't have to fight. You don't have to try to get healed. He got it for you. Amen. And then sometimes you're trying to believe God for something and you're trying to feel really hard. You try to believe. You have muscle up faith. And uh, <clears throat> you're trying hard, you know, think about just really concentrating on having faith. You know, but the Lord, He's the one that already got you the victory. You're already victorious. As far as God's concerned, you're victorious. No need, no need in asking God to give you the victory because He's already given the victory. God's everywhere. You have enough faith to overcome every battle. Now, 90%, 95%, 99 maybe some of you, percent of the time, you don't even feel like you're going to win. Yeah? Lots of times I just see that there's no way I can do this. But God's the one, he's going to get it for you. Amen? He's going to do it for you. I mean, he's going to, you know, he's already done it for you, but you have to follow, you have to, you know, win in the fight of faith. And, and there's a lot to say on that, but I just want to show you something here. He said, you will not even need to fight. Take your position, stand still, and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So that's where people stop right away. They're afraid, and then they get discouraged, and that's it. So they stay discouraged for, for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe two years, until you stop and say, why am I discouraged? Uh, i got to get going here. So, he said, go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. What is he just going to be with you just to see you get licked? Get a good beaten? <laughs> He's going to say, sorry about that, boys. Uh, I know the guy is bigger than you. And uh, so, you know, he's, he's with you. So what's the whole point? The, the, we're trying to say that God here, the scripture is saying that God is, is for us. He's with us. So anyway, that's, that's just an encouragement to you. That's extra tonight. We're not going to charge no, no fee on it. It's free. <laughs> Amen. There's not going to be anybody writing checks or going out to the PayPal. And, you know, I like PayPal because it pays. It pays. All right, let's go to um, uh, Philippians 4, 6. We're talking about no worries. Having the good report. We're going to talk about the good report. Everybody say the good report. Good. Philippians 4, 6, reading the King James Version, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So, he said, don't be worried about anything. Don't be anxious. Don't be overly anxious about anything. Don't be heavy with burdens. But, in everything by prayer, in other words, you, you, you take this heavy burden and take these anxieties and you pray to God about it. You supplicate. This, 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 is not, this is not a casual prayer. This is heartfelt. This is, this is something you bring to God with such care and, and, and concentration to God that you're bringing it to God. It's not like, oh, God, take, the, take care of this. No, this is really taking your care to God. And then you, and along with that care, you give thanks because you know God hears you. In 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, it says in there in verse 12 that, that God looks down on the righteous, that's you and me, we're righteous because of the blood of Jesus, because we have faith in Jesus. 
2 Corinthians 5.21 says, we have been given the righteousness of Jesus. His righteousness is ours. He said, God looks on the righteous. His eyes are upon the righteous. Now, he's looking at you right now. And his ears are open to your prayer. When you take this Philippians 4, 6, he's looking at you and listening for you to drop that care on him. And you have to be certain, you have to understand that God cares about everything about you. There's nothing that goes on in your life that he doesn't know that you have a difficulty or that you have problems. God knows every detail about your life. He knows every care, every worry, every concern you have. And when you carry those burdens and carry those worries, that's wearing you down physically and emotionally, draining you. You're not, you're not focused on people. You, you're not giving care to the people you need to care, care, care to. You don't pay attention to your work like you do, like the details you need to. You're not, you're not being uh, as nice as you should, could be. God wants you to be all there paying attention to people and being nice to people. Like, you can't be nice if you're worried. You're impatient and you're, you know, a little short and you're not, you're not, you don't take care of people like you should be. So God doesn't want you to carry any burden. And it's, it's, it's affecting your sleep, affecting your eating, affecting your body, making your heart pump faster, your, your adrenaline is moving, you're, you're just, just all in knots and... You know, different things happening in you. It's got, it starts to build up over a period of times and years. It starts to build up and affects you on your physical body. And uh, makes you look old. If you ever notice, uh, you know, I look at Brother Hagen, Pastor Hagen, I look when I go there, I look at him, his, his face is glowing, shining. Even he's, he's old, all right, but you could tell that the anointing of God is on him. It's, it's, it's wonderful. The Bible says, even in old age, you look ripe. You know, when you're, when you're careful, when it, you know, it says be careful, be careful for nothing. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. That language doesn't make sense to me. Like King James will make sense to me there. If you look at another version, it says in there, in the Amplified, or the, the Amplified, it said don't be anxious or worried about anything. So how many things should we be worried about? <laughs> nothing. You shouldn't have any worries, any burdens. Let's all say this. Say, I don't have any worries. Say, I don't carry any anxieties. I don't have a burden. Say, I don't have a care in the world. Hi, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the program. Uh, we're excited to present uh, the Word of God every week to you. And uh, we put a lot of effort in making sure that you're getting a good nourishment of uh, the blessing of God, of God's Word, to build you up and strengthen you. Listen, we got a good... Um, word that's uh, a book that we want to send out to all our partners and friends if you want one of these books our nonsense is going to tell you uh, about it in just a moment here so it's uh it's called where's uh, god in my storm you know we're going through lots of storms and uh, our pastor actually wrote this book and uh, uh, i believe that you really enjoy it listen to this our announcer will give you some information on how to get your copy Hello viewers and friends, we want to encourage you during this difficult season, we would like to send you a helpful book entitled Where is God in My Storm by Kenneth W. Hagen. Learn how to stand strong on God's promises and find an anchor in life's tough waters. You can get your copy of Where is God in My Storm by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. When you request a copy, please include your name and full mailing address. You can mail your donation to the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. Viewers like you help us keep sharing the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech. Hello viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. 
We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Pastor Roman and Anita Fisher are celebrating 30 years of pastoral ministry in Thunder Bay. Thank you, partners and friends, for sending in your video greetings and messages of congratulations from across North America. Let's listen to those words of encouragement from our friends and partners. I am so pleased to see Pastor Roman and Anita Fisher continuing to accomplish great things for the Lord. You are proof that good things come to those who are willing to sacrifice to reach a worthwhile goal. I hope you feel proud today and confident in your ability to rise to your next challenge because the Lord is with you. Congratulations from Larry and Sonia Salt here at the Mississaugas of New Credit First Nation in Southern Ontario. I don't have a burden. Say, I don't have a care in the world. You see, when you have problems, especially with people, and if you don't have any kind of worries about it, you kind of feel like, you know, hey, I should be worried about that person. Eh? You know, you should be worried sick. That's how it is in the world, right? But God doesn't want us to worry because, you know why? If, you, if you're worried about something, if you're worried about your health, if you're worried about your health right now, your physical health, you're worried about how sick you are, you're never going to get healed. Never going to get healed. Because faith cannot work when you're in fear. And if you're in fear, you're not in faith. If you're worried about money right now, you're going to be having a hard time. Because God cannot work in your life unless you get rid of that worry. Because if you look back at this chapter... In the previous verse, it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself, realizing that you're incapable of doing all this stuff yourself. Like uh, people who are proud, they say, oh, I can handle this. I'm just going to grin my, my teeth, my gums, and I'm just going to just put it to the grind there. I'm going to just really work it out here. So you have to bring it to God and say, God, I, I can't do this. I'm, I'm looking to you when you got worries. And so, you know, you look at this, humble yourself, you know, God will exalt you. So, be careful, be careful for nothing, or don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer, uh, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your, your request, in other words, whatever you have as a request, whatever cares you have, whatever kind of burden you have, you take it to the Lord. You're, you, you can do this, and God wants you to do it, because nobody else can do this better than you. Like if you say, yeah, pastor, pray for me. I say, oh, you sure, I can pray for you. And then I'll forget. I might forget, oh, two days later, oh, I'm supposed to pray for a wife. Yeah, sorry about that. You know? But, you know, uh, we, we try to pray for everybody when they, you know, uh, when it's, but you can't catch somebody in the middle of the street walking down the road. Hey, pray for me. Okay, sure, yeah. That's what happens most of the time, right? But we take every prayer. We, generally, we pray for everybody, you know, uh, in our staff meeting and when we pray, when we have Spirit Alive meeting or when we, whenever we get together with the staff, we pray for the church and we pray scriptures over the people. And my wife and I do it regularly. We pray. We walk around here and sometimes we, we can begin to pray for people. So, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your cares. How many cares? All your cares. You know, you have cares, things that you're concerned about. So these two scriptures are called the prayer of commitment 
or the stress-relieving prayer, the burden-removing care. And so we take those cares to God, and we give it to God, and we leave it there. You don't take it back. After you pray, you don't come back. And when you get bad thoughts after, and, and, and all of a sudden you get back to the same mentality. This is called spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not you fighting with a demon or praying hard against a demon. That's not spiritual warfare. They're already defeated. Those de demons are already defeated. Jesus already beat them. Your part, spiritual warfare, is when the devil comes to you and disturbs your mind and you start thinking negative and then you start feeling bad and fearful about what might happen according to what you're thinking that he's putting there for you. And so you're imagining all this wicked stuff happening and this is called spiritual warfare. It's happening over here. And so demons, they're coming. And, and you know, I, we understand, I was telling the staff the other day, you know, it talks about Ephesians 6, 18, or 6, uh, 12, it is. Uh, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness of this world, Rulers of darkness of, of uh, rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. So, our part is to deal with those three levels of spirits that are here on, in the world. These, uh, those spirits, those evil spirits that are in this present world, they're ruling over those powers and principalities, and they get them to do whatever. To people, and we have to deal with these spirits that, that's there. They're trying to override you and come against you. The spirits in the heavenlies, we don't have to deal with them. That's God's part. Jesus said, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Well, who's binding in heaven? Well, God is taking care of that. We're on earth, that's our part. We have to deal with these every day. So these things are trying to get to you and try to attack you and make you think wrong. And so when you think wrong, you start thinking negatively. And so if he keeps you there in worry, in stress, he'll defeat you every time. I learned this from listening to, you know, some good friends of ours. They've been in ministry for years. But if you keep him in the realm of faith, keep in the realm of the word of God, in the spirit, then we got the victory. But if we're going to look at just, a, just our present situation and, and deal with the present situation as a finality, then we're going to lose. If you're looking at a situation right now that is uh, that's seemingly insurmountable, that you cannot overcome it, it is too big for you, don't worry about it. If you know God, we just gave you two scriptures before we started this teaching that God is for you, he's with you, and he'll fight for you. Hmm? That's the message for you today. I'm going to preach extra now. Yeah, this is going to be extra. I'm going to take another offering. And we're going to give it to... Uh, Who's here that needs money? <laughs> the chicken fund. The question tonight is to whose report will you believe? Are you going to re believe a bad report? In other words, are you going to believe what you've been hearing in your mind? The enemy always gives you a report of what some expert said. Why that couldn't be done. Why you couldn't have enough money to finish that project. Or why you can't have money in this time is COVID. Why you could never be healed. Everybody in your life that has this kind of thing, he's dead already now. 
right? We talked about that the other day. I said, you know, we know who some who he had that kind of thing. He's, he died out of that. Sometimes you're trying to get, the, uh, you know, relief and you tell a friend of yours, you know, I got this problem, I got that problem, and, and this is happening in my body, but, you know, they say, well, I know who had that. Well, my uncle had that, and he died. Well, you're trying to get encouragement, right? But that, that's, that's not how you encourage people. So we have to get good reports. So if you're focusing on the bad report or the bad, you're not going to believe, you're not going to believe God for, and get the good report. Hi, family and friends. We want to pray with you right now. You've been maybe watching the program and something is, uh, you know, uh, you, have a, you have a need right now. If it's a physical need, if it's a financial need, if it's a spiritual need, no matter what it is, we want to come in agreement with you right now. If it's a family need, no matter what it is, Father, in the name of Jesus, and those people, just stretch your hand right now towards the screen or towards heaven in the name of Jesus. I'm going to agree with you right now. Father, you see those hands going up. You see those people stretching their hands towards the screen. I'm coming in agreement with every person that's, that's stretching their hands, relying on you and believing you right now for their needs in their physical body, for healing in their physical body. No matter what it is, we rebuke sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We come against that disease to, to leave their physical body right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness must go. Cancer must go. Diabetes must go. Weakness must go. Thank you for healing the uh, intestines and the blood uh, thing, the blood clots, and whatever it is, Father, the, the sore back, the sore neck, the sore bones. Father, uh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing, the anointing of God. I call on the power of God to drive out that sickness and disease in Jesus' name. And everyone that's believing for their child, I'm coming in agreement with you right now. The child is coming back home in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the children of the righteous are delivered. The children of the righteous are free. I pray, Father, you said my enemy is your enemy. I want to thank you right now. You're my covenant partner. And so we believe with those people that their children are coming home in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, we claim financial blessing and a financial breakthrough for every person in the name of Jesus. Those of you that have sent in offerings, I'm agreeing with you right now that as you send your offering, you're breaking the back of financial problems right now in the name of Jesus. We bind every enemy that's coming against the people of God to, to, to steal from them, to destroy them, from taking from them what belongs to them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, to say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I call on your name right now. The Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name shall be saved. Call on Jesus right now. I said, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you came and died for me. And I believe you rose at the, the, on the third day from, from the dead. Uh, and you rose into heaven and you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe that right now with all my heart. And right now, you are my Lord and my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. We'll see you next time. Write to us. Let us know that God has saved you and God has answered your prayer. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.